Once again, we're gonna dive into Adobe Lightroom Classic, and we're gonna take a look at how you can really bring a landscape to life. And in particular, we're gonna be looking at skies, a little bit of drama, and actually using luminance or color masks to really make the most of the kind of, ooh, the pop, the pop in your landscape. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, photography <laughs> tutorial. Let's just dive in. So as you can see from this photo, I've already done a little bit of editing, right? So just kind of, you know, adjusting a few global settings, highlights, shadows, a little bit of clarity, stuff like that, just to try and make the image, you know, getting it where we want to get it to, but without masks, I think it's still looking a little bit flat. And a big part of the problem with this photo is the sky. And we probably want to emphasize this middle section a little bit more as well. Now, it's very easy to do that. And you might know where we're going with that if you've seen a lot of our previous videos. Let's go ahead over to the masking panel here. We're actually going to go ahead and use a radial gradient. I'm going to use that right across the middle of the image. And I'm just going to brighten that. I'm going to do something like that, which I think immediately helps bring the photo to life. So all I've done is added a bit of exposure to that middle section. And you can see if I press the before and after, so that's just the backslash key on the keyboard, this is before, so without that mask and with. We've just we've just made that, that middle part pop a little bit, which I think really helps. But the sky to me is particularly dull. It's very flat. Now we could easily go in and dehaze it, right? We could just go ahead and go create new mask. We could go select sky. We could come down here to dehaze and just bring that up a bit, right? And that's going to help a little bit. We get a little bit of a pop, but I don't think it's quite doing what I want it to do. And I want to get that almost that circular polarizing filter feel to that sky. Let's double click that. In fact, let's get rid of that mask. Let's go ahead and click delete mask two. And instead, what we're going to do is create new mask. We're going to come down here to color range. And now you can see I've got this eyedropper tool. What I'm actually going to do, instead of just selecting one color with the eyedropper tool, I'm gonna go ahead and click and hold and drag a little square over the blue part of the sky. And what that's gonna do is let Lightroom select kind of an average color of that square and then select that within the, within the photo. And you can see it's done actually a really good job here just selecting these blue parts of the image, so of the sky, which is exactly what I wanted to do. I'm then gonna go ahead and bring that exposure down for the blue parts, maybe even play around with the contrast. I don't think that's doing too much, but maybe we'll do that a little bit. Maybe bring the, the blacks down a little bit, something like that. That's immediately, I think, looking pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select another mask, again, a color range. This time I'm gonna do a square over the clouds. Now that's gonna select a lot of the photo, more of the photo than I want it to, as you can see with the red here, which is not necessarily what we want. Now it, it might actually work out for what I want to do, which is I wanna boost the whites a little bit. It's gonna boost the whites in the sea as well. But if we don't want it to affect the sea, which for now we'll separate it out, we can just actually right click on this mask, intersect mask with, and we could always select select sky. So now it will only affect that color within the sky. We could also have intersected it with a linear gradient and actually just drag that down. So instead, let's go ahead and right click intersect mask with linear gradient. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down from the top. And you can see now we are only affecting these clouds, but where it intersects with, I believe now both the sky, yeah, and that linear gradient. So we've done a double intersect, which is really honing in on where we want this mask applied. And you can see exactly where that is with this red overlay. Now, if that's not a, if that's not actually showing for you the overlay, you can always press O on the keyboard to actually activate or deactivate that overlay, which is really useful. Now, what we're gonna do is boost the whites here. I might even just bring the exposure up a touch, contrast up a little bit. I'm gonna come down and actually just bring the clarity up a little bit as well. So if we look at the difference now with all these masks on and off, in fact, I can do that with the backslash key. This is how the photo looked when we started. This is where we've got to. So we are really not only adding a nice bit of brightness to this middle section, let's actually close the masking panel there, nice bit of brightness to the middle section, but also making that sky much more, much more dramatic, which I think is really cool. Now we can go ahead and do a little bit more here, do another mask, linear gradient, 
actually bring this up from the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just darken that foreground a little bit. Again, if you've seen previous videos, you know I love doing this, just pushing the viewer's eye up towards kind of what is more of the subject of this photo. And then, you know what? Let's do one more. Let's do another color range here. Let's select the kind of white of the of the waves here, I suppose. That has selected an awful lot of the image. So what we're going to do actually is come up to this slider here, the refine slider, just bring that down quite a bit. So as you can see, as I bring that down, it's selecting less and less of the photo. We're going to right click intersect mask with, and we're going to go luminance range. Now, what I want to do now is select an area of maybe a wave here. That's looking pretty good. And now what we've done is selected a color, which is the kind of white, but only where it's nice and bright, right? So previously it was selecting a lot of the photo. Now it's only selecting it where it's nice and bright. I'm going to intersect it again with a linear gradient, which I'm going to bring up from the bottom and do something like this. I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit, contrast, and actually maybe the whites just a touch. I just want to bring out some of the drama of these waves. And we could even go in one further, just make these, these waves feel a little bit more dramatic, right? Darken and, and kind of lighten different areas of it. We can come in here and maybe do a luminance range. So this is affecting different brightness values of the photo. I'm going to go ahead and select a darker area, something like this. There we go. That's what I want is to select those bits of the sea, right? Perfect. Now we've got bits of the sky, not necessarily the end of the world, because if we were to actually darken that, I don't hate that in the cloud, if I'm honest with you. Maybe even bring the black down a little bit. That's pretty interesting. We don't want to go too crazy with this because we'll start running into a bit of an issue where, look, if I darken this too much, it just starts looking crazy, which we don't really want. So we want to be a little bit subtle with this. And this is generally true of, of a lot of editing. I mean, just generally, but certainly with the masks, you don't want to go too crazy. But this is now feeling very dramatic. You know, we're getting a sense for the for the slightly more, the rougher condition, should we say. Let's look at before and after. So this is where we started. This is where we've taken it to. Just a much more, there's much more contrast. It just feels, there's a more, much more kind of life to it. You know, we get, a, we get a real sense for the feeling of the day. You can almost feel the wind and the cold. And that is what I really wanted to convey with this photo, because that's what it felt like being there. On the beach, right? This is much more dull. You don't have those feelings. Much more exciting. Let's do this with one more photo just to really kind of hammer it home. Let's come over to this one here. Now, uh, this time we've got my dog Nala in the scene, who you may have seen before if you've seen uh, loads of our videos she's in actually. Great model. I'm not gonna lie to you. Her rates are very reasonable. We're gonna go ahead and do a very similar thing with this photo. Now, I should mention this is a JPEG photo because you know, it's a brand new camera and actually the profiles are not available. The raw profiles are not available in Lightroom yet. So I can't edit the rules. I do have the rules, but for now we're working with a JPEG, but that does just go to show actually how malleable these JPEGs are still. There's a lot you can still do if you are shooting JPEG. So yeah, it's not the raw is better for if you want to do loads of stuff. It's not the end of the world if you're shooting JPEG. Let's go ahead and use the masking panel up here. Now, the very first thing I might want to do is just brighten Nala a little bit. I can actually come over here to the left. I'm going to go ahead and use these presets. Adaptive subject. This is just built into Lyrum. I'm going to go ahead and use pop. That is going to automatically mask out Nala and just brighten her a little bit. I'm then going to go ahead and do another mask, a radial gradient just over her face here. And I'm just going to brighten that a little bit. I might even just bring the contrast down a touch as well. And maybe even just bring that clarity down just a bit because she's looking a little, maybe not too much, maybe something like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to bring the shadows up a little bit as well, just to try and bring out a little bit more detail and brightness in her face. That looks that looks nice though. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, we can do a very similar thing to what we just did. Let's go ahead and use a color range. And I'm going to try and find a blue area. So something like this. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good, I think. We're going to go ahead and darken that area. That instantly looks really cool. I think that's a much more interesting sky. I might have gone too far with it. I might even dehaze the blue a little bit. But that's entirely up to you. It's all completely, you know what? It's all completely up to you. You, you can do whatever you want with your photos. That's the beauty of art. Now, of course, you can see, because this is a JPEG, you can see it starting to 
come apart a little bit. So instead, what I'm going to do actually is click on this mask too. I'm going to go subtract and I'm going to use a brush to just get rid of some of these parts of the mask, right? We don't want the image to come apart at the seams. And I think that that is looking better. We could also actually reduce the overall amount that this mask is being applied to the photo. So I could bring it all the way down to about 75. It's just going to reduce the amount. You know, we've adjusted a few sliders there that this whole thing is being applied. Almost the opacity of the mask, right? But this is instantly, I think, looking pretty cool. If we were to do a before and after, this is how the photo looked when we started. This is where we've got to. Again, backslash key on the keyboard. So instantly quite a big difference, which I quite like. Let's go ahead and do one more mask here, maybe a color range. I'm going to go ahead and select part of the cloud, something like that. And we're going to intersect this mask with select sky. There we go. Okay. Now I can just bring that brightness up maybe a little bit just to soften it a touch. I, I actually thought about darkening it, which would look a little something like this. And while I quite like that for the drama, it starts getting a bit much. You know what I mean? It starts getting a little bit too, it's like when you just pump the dehaze slider and it's just, it's just too much. We don't necessarily want that. In this situation, I'm going to soften it a little bit by just brightening that. I could always bring the, bring the kind of something like that, a bit of balance and even come down and just reduce the clarity as well, just to soften that sky. All right. I think that's actually looking pretty good. If we look at before and after, it's reasonably subtle actually because of the way that we've we've softened that sky so it's not so aggressively dramatized. Let's go ahead and bring a linear gradient in from the bottom as I like to do. Darken that a little bit, just push our viewer's eye up to Nala here and maybe even a radial gradient just across the middle, something like this. Brighten that middle section and then one more radial gradient, something like this maybe. Invert and then we're just going to darken it which gives us a little bit of a vignette, nothing too crazy. And maybe even the overall exposure of the photo could now come down just a touch. Not too much because it's going to start feeling too moody. Let's look at before and after. This is where we started with the photo, already slightly edited. So not, you know, from scratch. But that's how much the mask, I mean, this is with the mask, so without and then with how much those masks are playing a massive role. And this is how you can use color range and luminance range together with some other masks, you know, intersecting them so you get exactly the area you want to really make the most of, especially your skies. I think it's a great way to get that kind of circular polarizing filter feel to your skies, which I love. I love doing that. So much drama, so much, so much energy, right? And it just gives you the right kind of feel for the photo. It's not going to work in every photo, but actually even on a bright sunny day with a few fluffy clouds, you can get them nice and white and then that sky nice and... Ooh, nice and blue, nice and dark, and it can look fantastic. Now, I'd love to know if there's anything specific you would like to see. We do a lot of Lightroom Classic stuff. Would you like to see some Photoshop stuff? Because I do use that quite a lot as well, and that'd be really fun to do. Otherwise, there is loads of stuff to dive into within Lightroom Classic. So let me know in the comments if there's something specific you'd like to see, Lightroom, Photoshop, or really anything at all, including some practical stuff, which I absolutely intend to go and do as well. So let me know what you'd like to see in the comments so I make sure to make the stuff you guys want to see. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, new tutorials every week, new reviews, loads of stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, though, as always, thanks for watching.